Hello and welcome to another video and today I have a video showcasing the uh, pretty much the top five purple rarity weapons in Borderlands 2 that are just as good as if not better than the majority of legendaries and pearlescents in this game. The first one is going to be a practicable thinking from Hyperion, it's a shotgun though has a lot more range than the normal shotgun. We have a, a quad from Jacobs, a very close range high power shotgun. We have the Molly One Snyder, a very powerful sniper rifle, probably the most powerful sniper rifle that's not legendary, very high one-shot potential there. We've got a small anarchist pistol from Vladov, a very powerful pistol, can kick out tons of damage. And then we've got the Ravager shotgun. Now I will be showcasing all of these weapons on Maya, but just know that some of them will be better on other characters. For example, the Quad will be better on Krieg, the Ravager will be better on Axton, and the Snyder will be better on Zero. However, I thought Maya was a well-balanced character to showcase them all off so you can compare them with other weapons as well. So first up we have the Quad, a very high power shot that deals maximum damage at point blank range. It can fire both shots straight after each other to lead into the reload. This weapon needs to be used from point blank range, uh, so go with a high survivability build when using it. A B-Shield will not help this weapon very much. A Gunzerker can offhand this weapon, put it in his left hand to gain the max money shot bonus, even though it has not got a magazine size of 12. This allows him to gain the full money shot bonus every other round fired, which is enough to go far and above damage cap. I've actually seen this one shot an OP8 dragon. Yeah, it's that insane. Kree can also make strong use of this weapon using Bloodlust to gain an extremely large magazine, allowing him to just spam the extremely high fire rate of this weapon without needing to reload, doing extremely high DPS. Its low magazine, high damage, and low accuracy also make this a prime weapon for dealing both the damage and stacking anarchy stacks on gauge. Next up, we have the Anarchist, a weapon you can obtain in the green rarity variety within the first five levels of the game and have it carry you. No matter at what point you are in the game, no matter what rarity this thing is, it'll be powerful. The Anarchist is the closest we've got to the double anarchy from Borderlands 1. Let's go similar, but I think from the DPS of the Anarchist, that is the closest comparison since it does extremely high DPS at close range, especially if you are hitting those critical hits on a slack target. The Anarchist is very useful for all characters and you should keep an eye out for it throughout the entire game, no matter what level, no matter what character, because it's always good to have. The double uh, prefix on it, I think it's Diva or something. Uh, it fires two projectiles every shot. It will lower your fire rate slightly, but it'll kick out a lot more DPS than what I've got in the gameplay here, which is a faster fire rate prefix. The only downside of the Anarchist is its ammo consumption, which of course its legendary counterpart, the Infinity Pistol, doesn't have trouble with. Though that wouldn't make me choose the Infinity Pistol over the Anarchist because the Anarchist, as they say, has a higher fire rate. But if you do go with that double shot variant, the fire rate will be the same as the Infinity Pistol, but of course it's firing two projectiles, so it'll have double the DPS of the Infinity. At the cost of high ammo consumption, that is. Though the game does throw ammo boxes at you, ammo drops, and vendors, so I'd say the trade-off is 100% The Ravager, an extremely high damage weapon that will also deal explosive splash damage on top of the damage shown on the card. This thing, unlike the quad, can fire three times per reload instead of two if you've got a Torg or Bandit grip. But similarly to the quad, you need to be right in the face of your opponent, so high tank builds are recommended. For this weapon, it also highly benefits from both gun damage and grenade damage bonuses, making this weapon a must-have in the arsenal of Axton. Not just in your backpack for safekeeping, 
just in your equip slot at all times, it's that good of a weapon. Krieg and his high mag size and fire rate bonuses also pair nicely with this weapon, counteracting the uh, major downsides of it and just making it all out explosive death for anyone too close. It works extra well against large enemies such as loaders, nomads and goliaths, and because of its splash damage the Ravager is great at dispatching the really small hard to hit enemies since they tend to have low health so the splash damage alone can take them out. Be careful though because there are a lot of bosses and mini bosses that do resist grenade damage that will lower the overall damage of the Ravager. Um, some of these are constructors, raid bosses, and just general mini bosses in general. This Snyder, first thing, I apologize for my poor aim, one and a half years of Xbox game will do that to you, but <laughs> the, snipe, the Snyder is an extremely powerful sniper that can out damage even the strongest Jacob snipers for two main reasons. One, the Snyder is always elemental. This allows it to gain damage bonus from elemental relics while also catering to an enemy's weakness, the stack effectively doubling the damage already. Another is that for no listed reason, the Snyder gains a hidden boost to critical hit, at least it did when I last played it, played this game, so uh, yeah, that makes headshots with this weapon even more deadly. It also benefits greatly from use of the B shields since it is a sniper rifle, and using the B shields will increase your list of enemies that you can kill in one shot by a very large amount. Lastly, we have the Thinking, our third shotgun here. The Thinking, however, is not a point blank range powerhouse of death, but instead a long range, high DPS automatic shotgun. It does far less damage per shot, but its magazine size and fire rate make up for that. And also because it's Hyperion, it just keeps getting more and more accurate the longer you hold the trigger. Because of its longer range, the B-Shield pairs nicely with this as well, vastly increasing its DPS. It's basically a mini conference call without the splitting projectiles, but then again the splitting projectiles of the conference call doesn't really help it against small enemies like this, so... I'd say it's just as good against small enemies. So personally to rate them worst of best, from my own personal use and experience I would say the quad is at the bottom, followed by the Snyder, and then just after that we've got the Thinking, then the Ravager, and then the Anarchist, they're all extremely, extremely close. Uh, so this has been five effective purple weapons that deserve a place in your inventories, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.